Good morning, everyone. Hi, hello. My name is AJ, and uh, I am back again with another narrated art time lapse video for us to enjoy and take a look at. And yeah, today is very, very cool because I'm doing fan art, which I'm typically not known <laughs> for doing fan art. Uh, but this one is very, very special because it's a fan art of characters that is not very popular around the world, I would have to say. The two characters that was portrayed at the very beginning of the video um, are superheroes, are Filipino superheroes. Uh, most people are absolutely not familiar with Captain Barbell and Darna. Uh, that are those, those are the names of the characters captain barbell is obviously the guy and darna is the girl and yeah they're filipino superheroes pinoy superheroes or um superheroes made um in the philippines so yeah um it's kind of interesting how i ended up in doing this particular project because the original idea for me to do some form of fan art on heroes based on Filipino stories slash comics, whatnot. The idea came from when I was working on a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle illustration. So I thought it was kind of funny that I was thinking of Filipino heroes when I was creating a American-made hero. But nonetheless, yeah. But originally, I was going to put Darna in this particular illustration that I have of Mikey, right? I, it was Michelangelo from the Ninja Turtles that I illustrated. And I had the vague idea of putting Darna in with that illustration, but it never came to fruition. And I just kept Mikey and the two other characters that I have on there, which are my nephews, actually. Um, but yeah, uh, Michael, I, I think I named that. Uh, painting Mikey is always hungry or something that in fact it's in my portfolio go take a look and you'll see but anyway so the idea came from there because I was illustrating my two nephews um, together with Mikey because they're in love with Mikey well really more my more Aiden the, the older nephew at that time he really loves Michelangelo and we've role played the Ninja Turtles so many times. It's not even funny how many times we role played um, that, that particular cartoon. But yeah, Michelangelo was always his favorite. So anyways, get, getting back to the topic at hand, uh, I was thinking of illustrating Darna at that point, but somehow I ended up not adding Darna in that particular illustration. And I have completely forgotten about that illustration until not too long ago. I'm not exactly sure what made me think of um, Darna, the character. Um, but one thing I do remember, though, is that I have the image in my head of basically this two characters who are just uber frustrated and exhausted and it's tired and so I kind of had like this image in my head of like two superheroes that had been fighting like a huge battle and obviously they won they're at the tail end of the fight or whatever or or the fight is over and whatnot, and they're finally taking a deep breath and finally getting to relax. And you can just see that they're just super, super exhausted. And so that was the image that I saw in my head. And obviously, that's kind of what I ended up portraying. So in the illustration, Captain Barbell looks really beat up. I mean, he's got a black eye. And he's got some cuts and bruises. Darna is a little better looking, you know. She's not quite as beat up as Captain Barbell. But you can tell from the illustration that they were all very, very exhausted. And so, yeah, that was kind of like the image that came in my head earlier this year. I, I don't know what caused me to think of this particular image. Um, but I thought it would make a striking composition. And so, thus, therefore, this illustration was born. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's the quick history of where this uh, crazy idea of this illustration came from. Um, 
so yeah it's my unique take on these two characters that are very famous in the philippines um so yeah i personally did not grow up with darna um when i was in the philippines in the 80s they, they had a tv series of captain barbell and it was my first exposure of him was in that tv series it was very short-lived from what i remember like i don't even remember watching past a season one or season two maybe it didn't last for very long so i'm not exactly sure what happened in the series i know they've revived the character um a few times in many different media franchise uh, i'm assuming they've had movies made out of the character i'm pretty sure they've had um but yeah um so for captain barbell i'm quite familiar with him it's darna that i wasn't very familiar with i knew that there were a bunch of darna movies that was made in the 70s i never got the chance to watch them um, but when i was growing up in the 80s i there wasn't really any kind of media um with darna uh, not as much i i don't think she became big again until in the 90s but by then i was already living in america so i wasn't exposed to anything um that was going on back then but yeah i just kind of had to do these two characters because they're filipino born you know they're they're very well known in my country and i mean even though i've never personally seen like a full darna tv show or a full t darna movie i i'm very well aware of her you know it's kind of like superman basically i mean that's how big they are in the philippines i mean everyone in america even if they've never seen a single superman movie or seen a single superman tv show they know of superman why just because he's just one of those characters that just became really really big and everyone will just know him same thing with these two characters you know you could say Captain Barbell is like the Superman of the Philippines and Darna would be like the Wonder Woman of the Philippines. So like everybody knows who they are, even if they haven't fully seen the TV show of them, which is the case with me. But yeah, I'm determined to change that. At one point in my life, I will definitely, definitely go and watch a Darna TV show slash captain barbell anyways going back to the illustration which is what this whole series really is all about is really me talking about the art um, versus where the idea came from so at the very beginning of the video i did a few sketches and ideas of where i wanted to take uh the fashion of the characters um Captain Darna, oh Captain Darna, sorry, Darna stayed practically the same for the most part. I mean, there's a lot of differences. Uh, for example, Darna actually wears a bra, not a pasty. I, I think that's what they call it, like a paste-on or a pasty or something. Um, in my particular illustration, she's just wearing a pasty on top of her boobs. Um, so she's not exactly wearing a bra. Um but for the most part her particular design is very very similar to the original um design for the most part uh two stars on her chest area um and then a bikini with a golden belt a little hat with like a golden wings on top of her head which is broken in my in my illustration you know just to kind of denote the idea that she's been fighting and she and her uniform is broken all and whatnot um, but it's not very apparent um, so like on the top of her headgear there's supposed to be wings but you can see that the left side is not there there's only like the right side or like her left side it's because it's supposed to denote that it's broken but it, it's not very evident in this particular illustration so it's a speed paint that's part of the reason why um it's you know i just wanted to give the idea of of the brokenness um which yeah i, I could have detailed it some more in hindsight come to think of it but um for the most part it's not like a deal breaker you know so yeah 
Um, Captain Barbell's outfit, though, is one that is far more fascinating because when I was doing research on these two characters, there was a lot of variation on Captain Barbell's uniform. Like, I'm actually kind of surprised that there were that many differences. And I was so tempted, so tempted to go off the wall and just, you know go somewhere else completely different with the design because i saw one that was all blue uniform or something to that effect which i was like really surprised about that i'm like where did the blue came from his uniform his uniform is typically yellow um but there was one and so i wasn't really sure where it came from and so yeah i was tempted to do that but then in the end i ended up sticking with the all yellow uniform for the most part and you know just to simplify it and whatnot and so yeah i did a few sketches to just kind of give me an idea of where things were going to be or where you know what the uniform was going to look like and where i wanted to take it it was a good thing that i brainstormed that because when i was brainstorming it that's where i kind of got the idea for the pasties you know like i thought it would be cool that instead of her wearing a full bra or donna wearing a full bra she was wearing a pasty paste on um and so yeah that's where the idea came from and whatnot and so yeah uh, after all those initial sketches just to kind of give me an idea of the fashion then i did a quick sketch of the poses um i use a lot of references for this one typically i've been using 3d mock-ups heavily on my illustrations for this one i relied heavily more on photos and photo references there were quite a lot of photo references that i looked at uh, for this particular illustration um but yeah, uh, I used a lot of athletes and exhausted athletes. That was like my search term in Google was exhausted athletes. And so all of these is just a conglomeration of like all this exhausted, super buffed, you know, athletes that I found online. And so I basically did a mock-up sketch of what I wanted their poses to be based on all the photos that I have and then I did a nice nicer cleaner sketch uh, it's not quite as clean it's not quite as detailed as my other clean sketches but it's a lot cleaner than my first sketch and so after I finished the sketch I started doing this very quick coloring scheme that I do um, basically what I do is I just threw a bunch of uh random colors no it's not really random uh i basically have a brush with a hue variation setting on it meaning that you know if i choose the color red you know it won't only put down red it would put variation of the hues of red you know and the reason why i do that is so that i could get a little bit more color noise uh so I use a brush that has a hue variation in it and it ha also has like a shape variation in it just to kind of create some form of texture. Um, so I did that very quick. Uh, I laid down my colors, all very simple. I didn't even choose a whole lot of colors. You can tell there's barely any other colors in there except for like three or four. So there's the flesh tones, there's the red, orange, and yellow. Uh, and that's it for the most part. And then, of course, there's the blue smoke, which really the smoke. I was so upset about the smoke, <laughs> especially now that I'm looking at the smoke. Um, so I might as well mention this now since I'm working on this now. Um, right behind them, right behind the characters right now is the perfect smoke. <laughs> I kid you not. And I am so upset that I took this perfect looking smoke and switch it for something else. Basically what ended up happening was halfway through this illustration, I was kind of looking at the smoke wrong. Like I thought that that the wind was blowing the wrong direction or something. And that if it was blowing the wrong direction, it wouldn't be creating smoke like that. I was just totally misreading 
the photo, the image. I think at one point in time, I was just so exhausted that I had to take a break. And I did. I do remember taking a break somewhere in the middle of this illustration. And when I came back and I looked at the smoke, that's when I kind of got weirded out and thought it was like really different or something. And you would think that I, that, that wouldn't have been the case, but I, I'm not really sure what my line of thought was. But anyways, I ended up changing the smoke. And I'm like so upset that I did because now that I'm looking at it, I'm just like, oh man, that smoke is so gorgeous and it's gone. It got replaced with something else completely different. But I'm going to keep the one that's there now because it is what it is, you know, it ended up like that. So I might as well just let things be. So yeah. But anyway, so I did my quick coloring thing. And then after I do my quick coloring thing, I do this whole blender textured action which basically i just blend everything around um just so that i can have some form of blending thing i try to keep the shapes as readable as much as i can uh you could look right well you could look at it right now everything looks fuzzy but for the most part you could tell where the characters are where everything is and so yeah um as soon as all that is set and done, I begin my detailing process. And my detailing process is pretty much the same all the way throughout. I basically delineate my edges, which means I make my edges sharper so that my shapes read clearer. Uh, obviously, when I did the blender textured brush, uh, it kind of makes things a little fuzzy. And so, of course, I have to straighten things out and make it a little, make things a little sharper. Um, I also accentuate the shadows, which is what I'm doing right now. You can see that I'm adding darker shadows in Captain Barbell's cape um, just to darken things up a little bit. And then I add highlights and I do this section by section all the way throughout the painting until I'm finished with the image. So yeah, uh, that's what we're going to be watching in this video in the next few minutes.
So as you can see, I pretty much finished detailing uh, Captain Barbell and I have slowly or I have begun to do some work on Darna and detailing Darna. So yeah. Um, but before I talk some more about this piece, I, I really would like to take the time to uh, mention who the artists were that was responsible for creating these characters. Uh, Marsh Ravello, 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 am I mispronouncing his name? Ravello. Marsh Ravello was the guy who wrote these two characters. Um, they were both in separate publications, but Marsh Ravello was the primary writer and author writer of both of these characters. Uh, Jim Fernandez, though, was the artist that was responsible for illustrating Captain Barbell, and Nestor Redondo was the one who was um, the one who illustrated uh, Darna. And here, here's the upsetting part, <laughs> me changing the smoke. No, why did I change the smoke? Oh. That smoke looks so good. Now it's this horrid looking thing that I switched it to. But yeah, we're going to keep it as is. It's all good. Anyway, so Jim Fernandez, Nestor Redondo, Marsha Bello, great artist uh, to check out. Marsha Bello is very interesting guy too because um, I was reading some stuff on him and he is a prolific writer. I mean, he created... <laughs> pretty much all the hero characters I know from Philippines so I was like wow this guy has just been yep everywhere so um so yeah he is a very good writer Jim Fernandez and Nestor Redondo those those guys are very interesting too because I, I was reading some stuff about them or I was reading their Wikipedia basically and it turns out they did some work for Marvel and DC Comics at some point in time so that was always interesting um, it's always interesting to find out you know all these heroes that you look up to um, and finding out that they have some form of connection to like another hero that you have that you never knew existed you know like it was always a trip for me to find out that Thomas Kincaid and and, oh no, <laughs> I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. He's like my favorite YouTube artist that I look up. Uh, who am I thinking of? Uh, wow, wow, I can't believe I, I forgot his name. He's one of my favorite artists. He's really good. Um, not only that, but he did Dinotopia. I think he was the artist in Dinotopia. Oh, it's a good thing I remember that. Uh, James Gurney. How can I forget James Gurney? Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. Okay, so James Gurney. It was interesting to find out that James Gurney had some form of relation to Thomas Kincaid. It was like this two separate artists that, you know, I've known... At different points in my life and I never knew that they would have interacted in some form of manner but they did they both actually worked at Disney so yeah it's always interesting to have these kind of relations pop up such as Jim Fernandez working for a few uh, publications by uh, Marvel Comics as well as Nestor Redondo because you know you're on the other side of the world you didn't think they'd be involved in America but lo and behold I was wrong they were in some form or fashion did some work for American publishers and so that was very very interesting to find out about their history so yeah but yeah uh, do you look them up very interesting artists to look up and find inspiration from uh, which is what I always do I always try to look up uh, artists especially my contemporary ones such as James Gurney just to get inspired and fueled by them and whatnot help me improve my craft so yeah but anyways uh, going back to my illustration and there isn't a whole lot of time left in this particular time lapse so I'm gonna wrap this up but I, I wanted to finish um, this video talking about 
how hellacious it was to illustrate blood <laughs> and beat up faces. Like, I don't understand how Peter Polak, one of my other favorite artists, he does it so well. He does like blood and anything gross looking looks so good he makes it look so good like i don't understand how he does it and he makes it look realistic too which is like the most important thing but when i try to draw blood or even that black eye that black eye looks like makeup to me <laughs> like i i don't know what's going on there you know, in my defense, it's a speed paint, you know, I just wanted the impression of a black eye because, uh, you know, that's the whole point of a speed paint. You do things fast. So, yeah, I think I kind of pulled that off very nicely for a speed paint. For a full-blown illustration, definitely not. Like, it's nowhere near the level of Peter Pollack for sure. Um, But, yeah, I mean, if I have to you know say something like if, or if i have to say my biggest learning point or the biggest thing i have to learn throughout this whole illustration it was illustrating blood cuts uh blood falling down ears like i thought that was a really cool detail of the blood coming out of his ears i was looking up boxing pictures they are such great references um Especially um, mixed martial arts because there's a lot of blood in mixed martial arts, man. I mean, there bloods everywhere in that sport. Um, but yeah, that those were my references, you know. So it was always like interesting to look at, at how to draw blood, you know. Um, and it was interesting to look at the references and to try and emulate it. Like in in my case, for example. Um, blood is actually darker in color like most people think like rich blood red typically but it's actually not it's actually very very dark even the red that i use for the blood in this particular illustration it it honestly looks way too bright now that i'm looking at it especially the blood that's flowing down captain barbell's face from his ears uh i honestly think that that's way too bright a blood. The blood stain on his uh, uniform, right underneath his neck, that's kind of typically the kind of red that flows out of your body when you get a cut, or when you get, or when you're fighting and whatnot. Um, so yeah, blood is typically much darker than what most people would think it is. So yeah, so that was interesting to find out, um, and black eyes yeah don't even get me started in black eye like i still clueless in how to paint it again like i mentioned my black eye looks more like makeup more than anything else like hey look it's drag queen <laughs> captain barbell or something i mean i don't know what's going on there um but yeah it definitely needs some practice so yeah and then my other critique is darn his boobs, man. Why did I make it so small? Like, I don't want to sound misogynistic or sexist because that's like what people always associate comic book artists to be with the big boobs because really I'm not really about the big boobs. But I got to say her boobs did need a little bit more definition because she's kind of verging on looking like a guy. So in the end, I did fix it a little bit. I mean, I didn't give her super big boobs or anything, but I did fix it up a little bit to make her look less like a dude because it's so flat chested right now that she does look like a guy. So I have to fix that slightly. So, yeah. But this is it. That's the end of the illustration. Thank you guys for watching it with me. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from it. I will catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.